Okay, so we start. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the session for the track eight implementation of qualitative and mixed method research. In this session, we will have three presentations, three researchers. I just want to tell you just uh, a few rules that you know before. Um, each of you, each author, will have just between 10 and 15 minutes, which include the presentation and also the question. If you don't mind, I prefer that you make the presentation and after that question instead of at the end of the session. Um, I will tell you the time that you have left, so don't worry about that. And if you need an extra time, that's it. Between 10 and 15 minutes. Okay, with the presentation and questions. And you know the official language is English, so the presentation of the first of the slides and the speech will be in that language. And we have just three presentations. Um, we start with the first one, that is called the official presentation of the QA based in vehicle study. And the others are Sonia de Castro, Maricu Sánchez Gómez, Alicia García Alvaro, and Antonio Pedro Costa. So, you are ready? I am. Good morning, I am Sonia Verdugo Castro. And our paper is entitled Mixed Method and Visual Representation of Data with Cactus and Empirical Study. Uh, the paper was written by me and my thesis directors, uh, Marcos Antepones and Alicia Alvaro, and by Antonio Pedro Costa. We are from the University of Salamanca, and Antonio Pedro Costa uh, is from the University of Aveiro in Portugal. Okay, about the MIS method, authors argue that the use of quantitative and qualitative uh, approaches in combination provides a better understanding of research problems. Uh, what makes the MIS me methods uh, a different methodological approach is to place the objective and the research question in the focus on attention. MIS approaches develop uh, technical and theoretical benefit, uh, benefits and the new digital environment in research with mixed methods poses serious challenges, uh, such as the challenge of professionals, practice uh, on objectives, and the challenge of developing uh, methodologies and support technologies for mixed methods. About the data analysis with mixed methods, um, Mixed methods have the advantage of creatively working data and responding uh, firmly to information uh, quality problems. For this, it's necessary to design an uh, integration strategy for, uh, to make the triangulation of the data possible. This is a point very important in the analysis of the quantitative and qualitative information. Uh, this achievement will be a true analytical discovery. About the CADAS, uh, in relation to the new technological methods for these methods, it is necessary to develop techniques uh, for the visualization of quantitative and qualitative data, and the contemporary CADAS offers more and more powerful tools uh, for the semi automation of this analysis. And in relation with the visualization of the data, the techniques for combining quantitative and qualitative data um, uh, are particularly attractive to these methods researches. Uh, why? And these methods combine quantitative and qualitative information and the data bring together <coughs> the spatial and the social information and that. Well, uh, for all this, um, we developed and study uh, in the year 2017 in Valladolid, in Spain, with entities of the uh, sector that work uh, with an employed woman. Uh, interviews were conducted with professionals from third sector entities. These professionals developed 
This is the important social labor intervention with women and at risk of social exclusion. The objective of this work for the associations was to promote the empowerment of users, most of whom were unemployed. The objective of this study, our objective, was to identify the social labor actions implemented by third sector entities. And the research question was, was the social labor orientation offered by the study entities the same in all cases? These objectives allow triangulating qualitative and quantitative data with the supporting of two cartas, Enerigo 12 and WebQDA. WebQDA is the software developed by Antonio Pedro Costa. The participants of this study uh, were nine workers uh, from the entities participating in the, in the study. Um, they were socio workers and, and of professionals of education. The majority of users of the entities were unemployed women in situations of vulnerability uh, like uh, gender violence, uh, prosti prostitution, about the collection of data and analysis, the categories analyzed were training in social labor skills and motivation, workshops and pre unemployment and occupational training, labor intermediation, individualities, dictionaries of labor insertion, orientation towards self unemployment, social labor workshop for insertion and reinsertion into the labor market, and preparation in the use of information and community technology. Uh, we, we understand it, that women um, in, this, in this study ha have a problem with the information and communication technology because they didn't know use information and community technology for curriculum and employee search. The analysis was carried out based on the codification of qualitative discourse and the process of converting quantitative data into a uh, uniform scale. The coding of the speeches was done after creating the notes, and the map of notes was the result of the definite categories. In this picture, we can see the focus of the categories. Uh, the, category, the main categories was social labor lines of entities, and uh, seven categories uh, that uh, I, I say, I've told previously. The cartas facilitated the visual of the speech of the categories with which the study was working. This picture uh, was working with Enemigo 12. For the conversion of quantitative data to a scale and even a scale from value 1 to value 4 was used as uh, a scale part uh, according to the frequency of the item in each entity. Qualitative coding and quantitative conversion allow it to reaches lives. Uh, this means opening the way to data triangulation using canvas and equal to The results. In this uh, picture, we can see the relation with the categories and the main source of the information in order to know how the categories behave in the speeches. The figure shows the associative distribution between these variables, this dimension. And um, we, we did a map, a map of nodes. This is the coding matrix uh, between the different categories and the different scores of the categories developed by the entities. And this is the results of the entities uh, in relation with each um, categories in social labor line of entities. The entities P2, P4, and P6 develop more the line of social labor with the women. And this, this is the tendency of the similarity between the speeches in relation with the items. We have a two main clusters, and the second cluster have a subcluster too. Uh, this facilitates the next analysis of the results, uh, such as uh, uh, categories and uh, entities. And this is the work tree, 
about the word orientation and the phrase that we we identify in the discourse of the workers of the entities. This is very interesting um, if you want to know to understand what entities uh, say talk about this uh, this area or this field. And finally, we can have the closer or more frequent words in the study uh, and the most uh, the most frequent were, uh, were program training, attention, employment, violence, and insertion, prostitution, um, guidance, service, immigrants. Finally, the social labor jobs they were most developed in the entities web. And this is the, the items developed in order. Okay? Training is social labor is a motivation, training is training. social labor is national workshops, social labor intermediation, orientation towards self-employment and training in digital skills. In addition, uh, the three entities that we spoke about uh, in the world were P2, before and PC. These methods uh, allow the research to the term reality and resource holistically. The progress for research uh, methodology is accompanied by the technological revolution and the support of digital media, uh, such as Canvas in this study with WebQDA and NAV12. The Canvas uh, supports the visualization of results in a simple and cognitive way. And finally, to achieve methodological complementarity, it is necessary to combine the data and its interpretation. Uh, thus, the evolution of data can be achieved without different perspectives. And this is all. Thank you for your attention. Any questions? Any questions? Okay, I have a question. Um, I think it's a very relevant and um, very current uh, research. And I would like to know the future prospects of this research. If you are thinking about something, you are working about something. Okay, in the future, we will be interested in repeat this study, but uh, with a simple, more bigger, um, with more entities in other regions of Spain. Or in so other the regions. Um, okay, so, uh, yes, uh, for compare. And um, with uh, also not only workers of the entities. Uh, also with uh, familiars, users and public organisms um, for have more perspective of the situation of the exclusion and the orientated social labor orientation. Okay. No questions? Okay. okay, so we we'll start on with the next one. The next paper is entitled um, these methods, lesson learned from five cases of doctoral thesis uh, by Kainer Ricardo and So you have 10 minutes for the presentation and then five more for questions. Okay, thank you very much. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Okay, uh, we are going to, to talk about these uh, six, uh, six points, context, concepts. Uh, trends, objective of the study, method, and results, the lesson learnings. Um, about the context, I want to go from, from general to, to, to specific and to say that uh, well, we are coming several of, of here from Monterrey to, to Lyon, but uh, something that uh, you may not know is that uh, Monterrey is in a, in a state, like uh, an autonomous community, that is called Nuevo León. So it's uh, something, a coincidence, <laughs> that we are coming from Nuevo León to, to León to, to this place. So they all uh, this is part of uh, Monterrey. Uh, it's a, a city. You, you may recall uh, Alicia, some of these places. <laughs> and well, this is part of Monterrey. It's a small city of four more than 4 million people, approximately, so uh, you can have this idea. Okay, and some of us are coming from, from 
Tecnológico Monterrey. I am telling this because the, the thesis I am going to talk about are uh, from a doctoral program of uh, Tecnológico de Monterrey. Tecnológico de Monterrey is a multi-campus system. It has uh, about 28 campus uh, around uh, Mexico, and uh, these are all some of the buildings that we have uh, in Monterrey. And uh, the, the, the 28 uh, campus have about uh, 80,000 students. So it's a larger, it's a lar the largest, perhaps the largest university, private university in Mexico. Uh, this is a, a, a university that uh, is in the top 20, 20, 200 uh, in the QS uh, ranking system of universities. So we are in, 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 I guess, position 175 or something like that. Okay. Uh, and the, the study that I uh, was going to talk about is about the, the doctoral program. Uh, the doctoral program in educational innovation. Uh, this doctoral program uh, uh, is offered in face-to-face -face modality. Uh, it has been offered also in a virtual modality. Perhaps you recognize this picture. <laughs> and well, uh, 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 this program, uh, the, the study uh, is around this program, the doctoral uh, in the doctorate in educational innovation and uh, when well, we are going to talk about this uh, thesis in, in this program. Um, about concepts, well, I don't have to, to talk a lot of, about uh, this topic. Um, it's just to reflect about the importance of uh, defining a, an objective that may be qualitative or quantitative. We collect data that can be uh, quantitative and qualitative, and we analyze this data uh, in both ways. So we have a lot of variety of methods when we are going to, when we are talking about mixed methods. The 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 idea is that things are not quite an, an, a black, but uh, there are a lot of grays is uh, present in this uh, uh, in this diagram in this uh, scheme, and uh, it uh, shows the variety of mixed methods. This also is an, an important one because uh, um, this is a classification that uh, Johnson and on Uzi, I don't know how to pronounce that, says about uh, different kinds of uh, uh, methods according to the, the timing that uh, they may be concurrent or sequential or the status, the importance that we uh, uh, place in, in qualitative or quantitative. So if we place more uh, emphasis on, on one of them, we use capital letters, and in the others, uh, the opposite of capital letters, I don't know. Lower, Lower letters. Okay. Well, um, uh, this uh, topic about uh, uh, mixed methods, um, it, it is an interesting one. If we uh, go to Scopus and place mixed methods in title, abstract and, and keywords, uh, I did this uh, search yesterday, we can see this tendency that before 2000 there were uh, almost none uh, articles related to, to mixed methods. If we do a close-up of the last uh, 20 years, we can see this tendency in the, in the number of uh, articles that are talking about mixed methods. This is an important Thing to reflect because um, each day it is more important to try to mix uh, quantitative, qualitative, not only publishing articles in, in one or the other, but uh, articles that try to mix uh, information and, and try to, to get this creature. Okay, what is the purpose of this study? The purpose of this paper is to present a personal reflection. I have to say it's a personal reflection on the lessons learned that the author summarized from his own work as an advisor of five doctoral theses in the doctoral program of educational innovation using these methods. Um, uh, the method is uh, essentially a, a phenomenological approach using a multiple case method. Five cases were analyzed in order to study and describe the reality and the reality is the use of mixed methods in doctoral theses. 
The units of analysis are these uh, five theses. Um, I place the, the real num names because uh, they are public. The, the theses are already published. So the, we are talking of uh, this, uh, uh, these theses. The first one is 2007. Um, I read an article of 2004, so uh, we are talking of uh, more than 12 years when I, I advise uh, that student, Catalina Gallardo. And I have other, other thesis. One of them is in process, uh, of Brenda Guajardo, and the others are complete. And I can show you many things about the, the contents of this, but I want to, to move to, to the lesson level. Um, what I have learned about this? Uh, I have five lessons, and the first one is this. Uh, the methodological references. Uh, when I begin to, to study this, to, to try to, to understand what mixed methods means, uh, the authors, myself, interest uh, was in the use of mixed methods, and it has uh, uh, its origin in two seminal works, one by Creswell, 1994, and the other from Johnson and um, Webusi in 2004. Remember that uh, the first thesis that I advised uh, the, the student was graduated in 2007. Uh, and this uh, was a very fresh uh, article at that time. Uh, the author acknowledged that uh, at that time I had uh, little experience or almost not unknown experience with uh, doctoral students as an advisor. I had uh, advised uh, some of uh, master thesis but not doctoral thesis. And also, uh, I recognize that I, did, I, I, I knew little about uh, mixed methods. So that's, that was also new for me, and there was a lot of inexperience when I was uh, trying to, to understand uh, this methodology and trying to advise a student to use that methodology. The literature on this subject has had a remarkable development from that time to the present. From SAGE, I don't know if you know this uh, database, SAGE Research Methods, one may find uh, if we place uh, mixed methods in the, in, the, in the search engine, we can find 2,500 results only on the, on the methodological side. Uh, so uh, we are talking about, uh, uh, this is the some of the books that we can find uh, uh, in, as, a, an, as an e-books in, in this uh, area, but there are a lot of information. So the first lesson learned by myself is that the use of mixed methods is having an exponential growth, and those researchers who use them, as well as those advisors who direct the thesis using this method, must keep up to date with a long range methodological references. So, if uh, some of you are advisors, you have to, to, to try to, to, to keep up, to, to, to uh, get familiar with all the information that uh, is uh, coming up uh, every year, and it is growing exponentially. So, it is an important thing to, to, to try to, this is another book, to try to, to, to be uh, update about the, the information that we have. The second lessons, lesson that I learned is related to philosophical foundations. Um, I would say that the world of paradigms is still alive. So we have still the, 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 the war between the phenomenological and the positivistic, the qualitative versus the, the quantitative research, uh, uh, researchers. And with one may find resistance from many researchers to the use of mixed methods. So they don't like, they are very orthodox, they don't like uh, the mix of uh, uh, two different ways, two epistemological uh, ways to, to do research. And a lesson learned uh, is the importance of knowing the philosophical, the epistemological foundations of this uh, name post-positivistic uh, paradigm that is the, the one that leads the, the mixed methods. It is not enough to say that the combined use of quantitative and qualitative methods 
provides a complete view of the phenomena uh, under stop. It is necessary to understand the way in which post-positivism responds to the ontological, epistemological and methodological questions in our research stuff. So we have to, to study more philosophy to understand better the, the epistemological, the ontological uh, uh, roots of all this if we are going to use uh, 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 these uh, mixed methods in, in a right way. It is not only a question of using qualitative, quantitative, mixing that, but to understand what uh, lies uh, under the, the, the epistemological way of conducting these studies. The third lesson is validations. Um, uh, most of the thesis that I have uh, advised are two steps uh, thesis. One qualitative and the second quantitative and the or vice versa. And, and looking back of, on these cases, many mixed methods inside remain uh, on use. We are not using other variations. We are losing a lot of opportunities uh, of using mixed methods in a better way. So we use only two, two steps, two stages, and two phases, and that's it. A lesson learned refers to the importance of exploring other variants. In doctoral thesis, when the students are sometimes in a, in a hurry, to, to conclude their thesis, this can be a limitation. But it is always convenient to explore design alternatives that allow to provide more solid evidence to better support the research work. So there are a lot of uh, designs that we can use, and these are only two of many that, uh, that we can use if we want to, to take advantage of mixed methods. The fourth one, uh, the precision of terms. What is mixed methods? So if we if we think uh, in general terms in all research work, there are data that uh, of a quantitative nature, uh, such as qualitative, and however this does not imply that research is using mixed methods. So if we uh, can uh, make some statistical analysis, of course we have to make a qualitative interpretation of them. But that doesn't mean that this, this is mixed methods. If we have a, a phenomenological study, we have to count something and place numbers, but that doesn't mean that this is mixed methods. So the, the question is, what does it really mean to use mixed methods? Uh, some, some of them are countable, numerical, and the others are verbal information and description. A lesson learned uh, from this thesis that I have uh, directed is that uh, refers to the importance of specifying, specifying terms and reviewing whether mixed methods are really employed as a methodological alternative to answer certain types of uh, research questions. Um, we had a, a Monday um, uh, a thesis in which uh, the, the author claimed uh, that uh, he was using uh, uh, mixed methods, but when we saw the qualitative part the qualitative part was um, very, very quantitative. So the qualitative part was with the uh, percentages, frequencies, and I say this is not mixed methods. Uh, he was using a lot of numbers uh, in the qualitative part, and well, this was a, an, an objection, a, a, a question that I did to the to the student. Finally, the first, uh, the the fifth lesson, fifth lesson that I learned, it refers to training. The use of mixed methods requires training processes, especially in those carrying out postgraduate studies. In many doctoral programs, there are always courses or workshops on quantitative or qualitative methods. However, a, few, a quick review of the curriculum doctoral programs shows that uh, they lack training processes that allow students to develop the skills to use mixed methods. We are not teaching doctoral students how to use mixed methods. A lesson learned with special dedication to those of you who direct doctoral programs is to provide students with methodological tools that allow them to take advantage of this type of methods. We have to improve a lot uh, the, the, the training of our students uh, in relation to these arts. That's it. Thank you very much. Well, I have a question. Uh, do you have a
six courses on methodology, two of them quantitative, two of them qualitative, another one uh, more philosophical, and the other one uh, as participant research, uh, uh, more uh, action research. But uh, they lack a specific course on uh, mixed methods in, in, a, in our program. This is something that we have to take uh, into attention when we are uh, changing our, our curriculum, our uh, uh, the, the program of uh, uh, the courses. So we have to, 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 to introduce this topic, to talk more about this topic, if we want to train students in, in that way. Definitely it is uh, important. In the case of uh, Salamanca, uh, where we, can, we could uh, teach uh, on Monday, I think, on Mon this Monday, uh, uh, a course of four, four, four hours on, on, on mixed methods, but four hours is uh, very little, is not enough to, to develop the skills that uh, this kind of methodology requires. Yeah, and also, which specific tools do you think that they need, technological tools? Uh, 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 I'm not very familiar with the specific tools. Uh, I was very interested with the, with the paper of Sonia to try to see if there are more tools, uh, uh, technological tools that can help this kind of mix. So I'm going to, to talk with Sonia later to try to get familiar with uh, this kind of tools, but because I, I am not very familiar with them. <laughs> Thank, okay. you very much. Thank you. Santos, carrying out in the uh, must, uh, TICS master degree in the University of Salamanca, and is uh, carrying out uh, inside the European project. And this is the structure of the presentation. So, uh, first of all, I need to present the project in which the master thesis was carried out, and in this case, the work project is the context in which, in which we focus the study. And this project uh, emerged for a need inside Europe, inside the whole world, but in particular in Europe, focus on the participation of young people in the decision-making processes. So, uh, there are several studies that say that young people is an emerging group, there is Young people for, from the Europe, for the European Union are persons below 30 years old, from 7 years old to 30 years old, and they feel that they do, don't take part in the society. They are part of the society, of course, but they don't feel that they can uh, decide or be part of the decision that will uh, 
will affect them in the future. So this project is trying to solve this problem, trying to put in contact the young people with the politicians, decision makers, and other, pe other people in the different institutions that take decisions. So, where is the project? Uh, we will be finished this, this month, at the end of this month. It was a three years project, uh, funded by the European Union through the Horizon 2020 program, and with the participation of nine partners, nine countries. We work with Ospan Italy, um, PI from United Kingdom, Doga School, that is a network of schools, private schools across whole Turkey, in the years that, work, uh, that works with uh, children L, uh, LGB in Ireland, uh, Youth Foreign Change and Understanding International, that is a partner from Belgium, but it's an international association of uh, young people, MOVES uh, from Austria that works on gender and diversity, Boundaries uh, from United Kingdom, and Tel Aviv University from each Israel. Ufu is an European project, sometimes uh, Israel, Turkey, and these countries can participate. So, inside the work project, we have a methodological approach in order to try to put in contact and to uh, introduce young people in the decision making processes. And this methodological approach was, carry, was testing during these three years in different cycles. There are other papers focused on this. And also we have a technological part. We have an ecosystem, a technological ecosystem that is different tools, software tools, online tools to support this methodology. So the, the main focus is not the tool, the main focus is the methodology. The tool is only a support. And inside this ecosystem with the methodology, we defined during the last year several international conversations. The international conversations are conversations between young people across Europe. So these conversations are in English because it's the language that more or less all people can speak. And we organize uh, each conversation during two weeks. From January until September, there are some periods that there, there, was, um, uh, there were conversations. But we focus the different conversations on different topics that young people in a previous study uh, decided these topics interested for them. So uh, this uh, study is focused on uh, Oh, it's not a screenshot here. It's focused on gender stereotypes, but the first edition, not the second one. So this study is focused in a conversation that we related to the International Women's Day that is celebrated the 8th of March. This day we celebrate the woman, uh, we celebrate different things, but uh, it's not really a celebration. It's, um, uh, I, I don't know how to say in English, but it's not really a celebration. It's something to uh, work for women in the different fields of the world, in the, in the world contest and also in all the contests in the society. So, uh, to celebrate, um, to do something for this way, we carry out an international conversation, two days conversation, uh, three, two weeks, two weeks conversation. And it will focus on stereotypes, <laughs> gender stereotypes on inter and equality on internet. So inside this conversation, uh, the idea was to uh, get the views and the ideas about gender stereotypes on internet uh, provided by the young people in Europe that was involved in the conversation. The conversation takes part inside the web platform that is part of these technological tools to support the project. And this is a screenshot of the conversation that was after in this uh, study analyzed. We analyzed those forums. And we divide the conversation in three main activities. We start during the first week uh, 
uh, with a process of discovery. So the people involved in the project, in the conversation, uh, had to search on internet different um, stereotypes, gender stereotypes. So they, they start to find different pictures, videos, uh, news about these stereotypes and they share in a forum, in a space, inside the wired platform. After this process, uh, this analysis uh, process, they start to uh, comment the different uh, content shared by the different young people involved. And after that, they have to reflect, reflection, reflection about how uh, the way of we use internet or the technology can influence in the stereotypes. And also they carry, they carry out this inside the platform, inside the forums for this international conversation. So the main objective of this study was focused on analyzing the discussions inside these forums because we need to emerge the, the main ideas to share with the stakeholders, with the decision makers, to give the view of young people about this topic. So, during the analysis, uh, we focus on identifying the opinion of young people related to uh, which are those stereotypes, where those stereotypes are developing, <laughs> which are their effects, and who are affected by these stereotypes. Regarding the methodology, we use a qualitative uh, approach and uh, from a phenomenology uh, approach and we carry it in exploration. So, uh, to carry out, to, to, to contextualize the, the selection of this topic, first of all, Nadia uh, carried out uh, analysis of uh, stories. Stories are a public part of the project that are available for all people in a public website because the platform is private. And the stories are stories that young people across Europe during the three years of the project write and share in our public website of the Wired project. And these stories are related to so many different topics and the first part of this study was analyzed these topics to identify what are the main topics that young people share through uh, stories. And after this analysis, also we identified that the gender stereotype was one of the most um, relevant topics in the stories. This is a screenshot of the website where you can find the different uh, stories. And this is the uh, results, uh, the quantitative uh, result summary of the story. So we have, we have more stories right now, but at the moment of the study we have 38 stories related to the use of technology, gender stereotypes and equality, democracy and rights, educational system, environment, communication, media, employment and self-image in network. And this is the uh, still file to carry out the analysis because we need to get all the information from the website. There is no uh, technological way to extract this information. So we put, uh, we get from the website and copy in an STL file in order to classify and analyze the information. This is a summary of all the results. And after that, we carry out the conversation analysis, the analysis of the conversation about gender. And we use, and Nadia used, because I'm not expert really in qualitative analysis, the MBIVO, uh, the analysis with MBIVO 12, that the license is provided by the University of Salamanca. And in big numbers, we have 62 participants and 275 uh, comments inside the forums. So enough information to 
take an analysis. So the most relevant uh, results, sorry because the study was carried out in Spanish, uh, the most relevant uh, topics emerging from the conversation was um, toys, uh, body, colors, um, sports, cars, um, fashion, uh, video games, um, um, K-Givers, Cuidadora, Dependesi, uh, sens um, I don't know sensibility, dance. Uh, so these words are related to stereotypes that during the conversation young people identify on internet. And we didn't provide no information about the stereotypes to the young people that participate. Okay, that, this is very important because if you provide more information about the stereotypes, you can change their, you can influence in the results of the study. So this is the uh, results in a summary way. So the most relevant uh, topic that emerged during the conversation was choice, of course. Toys and colors was the most uh, stereotypes in, uh, found in the internet. Pink for girls, blue for boys, and the difference between the toys and also related to the stereotypes about um, beauty. Thank you. <laughs> so uh, the stereotypes uh, identified by the young people affected also both men and women, more or less in the same way. So this is also an important result. We cannot generalize because we don't have a uh, big population. But uh, it's an important result because sometimes when we talk about gender gap and gender problems, gender equality, uh, we need to take into account that also the stereotypes and the gender gap and the gender equality affect to all genders, men, women, other genders, etc. So some results, there are more information in the paper. And some of the comments uh, uh, taken from the forums related to the negative influence of TIC in the stereotypes uh, um, emerging. So, for example, uh, Ancalotti, Ancalotti is a username, it's not a real name. I think the technology really influenced the expansion of stereotypes, especially in adolescents, or Noelia 09. Uh, with the explosion of social networks, we are more exposed to people and to being criticized. Or Alicia BF, I don't know Alicia BF. Um, since the stereotypes have always existed, but with the internet, the situation is increasing, making many more stereotypes appear. So these comments are part of the last part of the conversation, focus on analyze the influence of internet and technology. More details. And regarding the some comments related to rejection, uh, re rejection of inequality and the permanence of stereotypes, about the influence of internet and technology, we need to put an end to these stereotypes. Toys are toys for all children. We must end with this by means of co-education, promoting an equal education of children and, and girls by Emilia. And we want more women doing jobs as firefighters and more men performing trades at, as nurse. And there are no jobs for men or jobs for women. There are jobs for people. So our main conclusions are that the stereotypes that are pointed out coincide with those uh, that appear in theory, because before the study we carry out a, a short uh, um, contest analysis about the literature related to stereotypes. Equal importance is given to male and female stereotypes following the line of the most recent studies. Gender stereotypes are dangerous <coughs> for the achievement of an equalitarian uh, society and equal values are defended against discrimination. 
and we need a change, a social change through education. Of course, this study has some limitations, and there is a limitation about the, there is a bias about the population because most of the participants were, were female or woman. Also, most of the participants were, uh, was from Spain, and most of them was between 18 and 22, 23. And there are a few studies on stereotypes, especially um, male and uh, masculine stereotypes. So it was difficult to contrast, contrast the information. And there we need more time to develop the discussion because not all the 62 participants joined the final discussion. So, thank you very much. Any questions? Just an observation, yeah. because uh, the, the title is a qualitative analysis, and this relates well to, uh, to what uh, I was talking about, uh, in, in a sense that uh, in a qualitative analysis, uh, there is a lot of numbers, uh, percentages, frequencies, so it, it is interesting. Perhaps it's a, a bias of uh, people from, from informatics, from, from computer science, it's because the, 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 the doctor, the recently graduated doctor, also presented uh, uh, numbers. a lot of numbers, and he's also, I guess, from, from this field. In this case, the presentation was prepared by me based on some presentation prepared by Nadia. And I need quantitative numbers to share the qualitative results because I'm not a real expert. I collaborate with people that carry out the um, qualitative analysis always. So that's why there are some numbers because it's easier for me. But in the master thesis, there are a lot of um, qualitative results, such as these comments emerging from the analysis. So it's a combination. The word cloud, then you... Yes, the word cloud, and I think there, I, there are more visualizations but the, of this. For example, the, the, the word cloud is also a, a reflection of numbers, because uh, if, the, if the word is bigger, that yes. means that it has more frequencies it's yeah, only a, a different from, representation. Yeah, the word, then you can have some of the discourse, a specific discourse mm -hmm. that refer to that specific topic. Yeah, but uh, I think that, that the, 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 the size of the word yeah. uh, is uh, a I reflection of a frequency. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, that's it. Okay, yes. I have a question. Yes. Um, did anyone control the conversation, not the topics, but there was any control in the conversation of the teenagers? Yes, because it, it, there are no time to explain the whole project, but yes, uh, inside the, the community, the platform is organized in <coughs> communities, like Facebook can be organized in groups, but uh, it's a private space based on communities. So each community for each conversation and forums inside, uh, conversations inside. And there are facilitators in each community. So there are people that check that the young people don't say nothing um, bad to other person. Also, they are anonymous inside the platform. They only know their usernames. The uh, real names are in other database, in other space, and I'm the only person that has had access to this uh, connection. But there are facilitators. But the facilitators only try to uh, push up the conversation, not to influence in the part, in the comments. So only try to engage the young people to continue the the, the, the discussion. Okay, yes. yeah. It's very interesting the project. Congratulations! I love this project. And my question is about this: uh, How are you looking after the ethical criteria in the project? Yes. Wow. We are now carrying out an ethical analysis of, of our uh, ethical report of our project. 
We will focus uh, on this related to not exactly ethical, but focus on the security of the people involved in the project. Because, okay, young people and their 30 is not a big problem, but we work also with people over si seven years old. So between seven and 14, there is a big problem. So the platform is private. You can only access by invitation. Um, the platform is private. When you are inside, you are anonymous. Uh, so you accept a short legal, legal terms, but you are anonymous inside in order to uh, give you privacy. If you decide to delete your account, you can delete your account or, and all information, all your participations will be deleted. At the moment, there are no handmade processes. It's automatically. Um, where are children under 14, they have to get the consent of the parents. And this is physically, so the person, the facilitator, that is in a country, in a school, talk with the teacher or someone, the teacher try to manage. This is the most difficult part of the project. Uh, the teacher talk with the parents, the parents uh, sign the consent, give to the teacher, the teacher to the facilitator, they save uh, this and they told me, Alicia, we have the consent. And you can accept the final registration of this jump of these children. So that's more, more or less the, the control. And for this study, they are anonymous and they accept to participate because they are inside the, when they join to the platform, they accept to, uh, that their information will be used to carry out uh, studies inside the, related to, or really inside, but related to the white project not for a commercial uh, goals, well, okay. proposal. Okay. Okay. More or less. <laughs> you said that this project is going to finish at the end of this month. Are you carrying on working in this line or not? Yes, we will continue working. Uh, we will try to translate this transfer, transfer this project to Latin America. Okay. We are carrying out a study in Brazil right now. Uh, not really to carry out international conversations, but as a way to try to collaborate between different groups in a course. Yeah, and so it's very important for education. <laughs> yes, because if you have, uh, we will uh, carry in as experience that four groups for different hours working on the same subject will work, uh, will discuss about several topics about digital society inside the the platform. This is the online part. And after that, they will work face to face, but in their groups. So there will be a part to collaborate between groups and a second part to collaborate individually. Okay. And also, we have an association. Oh, we have a wireless association. <laughs> <laughs> this is important. The, we have a wireless association that is uh, a, the, his, uh, its, its aim is to continue the work of Wired, to apply to different contexts and to try to use in a real way. And also we have the final event, marketing moment, the final event during the next week. And it's an online festival. So we are carrying out a Wired online festival that are three days, totally online, fully online, from 10 o'clock in the morning Central European time, to 4 o'clock in the afternoon, Central European time. And there will be a speakers, room tables, uh, when you, where young people can join, interact, and speak. So there will be three days. One day will be, the first one was focused on internet safety and privacy on internet. The second one, of course, gender and self-image. Mm -hmm. And the third one is focused on living on social media and um, new social media and another thing that I can remember. Ah, and digital participation. 
and that. And you are invited because I is open. <laughs> Thank you, Anna. I just want to say that we have seen the questions to spend this time with you. And I hope to see you again next year in Salamanca. Okay, and share more words. And maybe we have a training for students in this aspect in mixed method researches. I hope so. I hope so. Of course. Uh, you have. Invite me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.